In this video, we're going to take a look at the different types of cameras in 3ds Max. I'll be using a file named Camera Types, which can be found in the Working Files folder. When working in Max, you'll have two different types of cameras to choose from. Those choices can be found in the Create column of the Command Panel under Cameras. Let's take a look. Notice that you don't see the name Perspective in the list. The reason for that is because Perspective is not an actual type of camera. It's simply a viewport that's basically designed to hold you over until you create a camera. You see, where in which a camera can be animated, in addition to having a healthy handful of controls and settings that can be adjusted, a perspective view doesn't offer any of those helpful features. It gives you a three-dimensional window that can be spun around and moved in and out of, but it in no way offers the flexibility and control that's gained by adding a camera into the mix. So if you're serious about making the most out of a pair of eyes for your scene, in other words, a viewing window that'll give you the most inflexibility and control, plan on a camera being part of pretty much every project. So Max gives you two specific types of cameras to choose from, one being called a target camera and one being called a free camera. The major difference between the two is that the target camera has a handle or target at the other end, which typically comes in pretty handy when controlling the position of the camera in a scene. The free camera doesn't offer the target on the other side, which too can be helpful in certain situations. We'll take a look at both. Let's activate the target type camera and we'll create one in the lower right hand corner of our top view. You click to set the camera, then drag to the position where you'd like to locate the target. In my case, I'll position that directly in front of the logo. With the target camera, both ends can be repositioned. Moving the camera changes how it looks at the scene, that camera always locked or looking in the direction of its target. Moving the target changes where the camera focuses its attention. Where the target goes, the camera's focus goes, rotating or spinning as if it's on a tripod. Notice also that by creating the target camera in the top view, we have it laying parallel or flat to the ground. A target camera will always lie flat to the viewport in which it's created. So take a look at how things would change if the camera, for an example, was created, let's say, in the front view. Let's zoom out a little ways in our perspective view and we can see the different angles the cameras are taking on. For that, I'll go to the Views pull-down menu and choose Save Active Perspective View. We can now zoom out a ways to see the angle of both cameras. Notice the second target camera that we created is positioned more in an overhead location. The first camera is lying parallel to the ground. Let's go ahead and delete that second camera. With it selected, we can simply hit delete on our keyboard. So target cameras lie flat in the viewport in which they're created. That translates to mean that if you want a target camera parallel to the ground in your scene, you're going to need to make that camera in your top view. Let's also select our first camera and delete it from the field of play. We'll then reactivate our perspective view if needed, returning back to its saved layout. Now, if we instead created a free camera, that one's designed to point directly into the viewport it's created in. And having no target, it's simply a matter of point and click to place it in the scene. Let's head back over to the right hand column, clicking on free. I'll then position my mouse in the middle of my logo design and simply click. Now that's all there is to it. Let's now on the top view, pull the camera back a little ways to the lower part of the window. Notice in the perspective view that if created in the front, a free camera points straight ahead. Let's go ahead and delete that and instead create a free camera in the top view. This time, as you can see, the camera is pointing straight down. So if using a free camera and wanting it to lay flat in your scene, in other words, parallel to the ground, be sure to make that camera in the front window. Let's go ahead and delete that and make another free camera in the front view. Once we do that, we'll return to our top viewport, pulling the camera down to the lower part of the window. Let's now take that top view full screen. Not having a handle on the other end, the free camera looks in the direction that the camera points. To turn it side to side, you simply rotate the camera itself. Let's go ahead and delete that and we'll return to using four viewports. So there's your choices, target and free. Which of the two will you use most often? Typically the target camera, as the handle on the other end usually comes in pretty handy. When are you most likely to use a free camera? That's most helpful when doing path animation, in other words, putting a camera on a path. For things like architectural walkthroughs, scenic drives along the ocean coastline, 
Or maybe riding a bike and having your audience go along for the ride on a trip down a mountain trail or maybe around a motocross track. Okay, let's see what we can do. We're going to activate our top view making a target camera at the bottom center of the window pointing the target back to the logo. Now I'm going to temporarily activate my grid just for a moment so I can line things up. Okay, once we have that done, let's head over to the Modify column and check things out. In the Parameters category, you'll find several stock lenses you can choose from, plus options for things like clipping planes and depth of field. Now in the front window, take a look at the blue box. This represents what the camera sees. It's referred to as the field of view. Why don't we see that for ourselves by now switching our perspective viewport over to using our camera? Now you can do that in a couple different ways. Let's first activate that perspective view. Option number one would be to go in the upper left hand corner, click on the name Perspective, then change to Camera. The second option, which I'll use here, is to simply use the keyboard shortcut. That's the letter C. Either way you want to go, let's go ahead and convert the perspective view to our camera window. After doing so, notice the new name in the upper left hand corner of that view. OK, let's activate our top view, move our camera around and see how that looks in the camera viewport. With the camera moving from side to side, you can see how that dramatically changes the angle of what we see in our camera viewport. Watch the way things would look if we went to the front view moving the camera up and down. You can also see how that's changing things by looking in your left hand viewport. Let's instead move the target of the camera. Now to select that target we've got several different options. Number one, on the left hand side of the toolbar, we could use the selection filter, limiting ourselves to only being able to select parts of the camera. A second option would be to type H and select the target from the Select by Name list. Thirdly, we could go back to the camera viewport, click on the name Camera on the upper left hand side, choosing Select Camera Target. There we go. With the target selected, let's now go back to our top view, moving the target from side to side. Notice how that changes what you actually see in the camera window. Objects that are not in the blue box, the field of view, are cut off from the camera view. Let's go to the front view, moving the target up and down. Here we can look above our scene and down below. Again, check out how that looks in the left hand window. Deselecting the camera eliminates from view what is called the camera's cone. If you'd like that cone to stay in the display even when the camera is not selected, do this. We'll go back and select the camera, then back in the Modify column, under Type, we'll activate Show Cone. Deselecting the camera again leaves the cone visible on the screen. If wanting to move both sides of the camera at the same time, you'll simply select the line that connects the two together. Once you've done that, you'll notice that both ends of the camera are highlighted and now you can move things around simultaneously. This would be the technique you'd want to use if you, for an example, wanted to completely move the camera to a new location in your scene. If wanting to rename the camera, you'll select only the camera itself, then in the Modify column, change the name. I'll type in MaxCam. After doing so, you'll notice that the camera viewport name has changed. If you no longer want a camera in your view, as we've seen before, you'd simply select the camera and hit delete. Now when you do that, look what's happened to our camera viewport. It's automatically converted or reverted back to a perspective view. With there no longer being a camera in the scene, this gives me an opportunity to show you a real cool way to automatically create a camera that's matched exactly to the angle of the perspective view. To do that, you'll activate the perspective view, head up to the View's pull down menu, then about halfway down the list, choose Create Camera from View. You could also use the keyboard shortcut, Control C. With the new camera being created, the perspective view automatically converts to a camera view. So that's the scoop with Max's two camera types. They're both versatile and easy to set up. Make sure to use them in your own projects.